Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about three wide receivers that are currently being disrespected by fantasy football rankings right now. But before we could do a deep dive, Michael Phelps style, into these three wide receivers, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out ton if you want to follow me on twitter please do so at notorious fntsy so without further ado let's get into my three wide receivers that are being disrespected by fantasy football rankings right now we begin at number one with my guy wiki wiki dj Moore of the chicago bears current underdog adp wide receiver 26 at pick 47.9 last year as a panther he was wide receiver 22 and half ppr and the wide receiver 34 and half ppr points per game. DJ Moore was traded in that Carolina Panthers trade to acquire the number one overall pick where they ultimately selected Bryce Young. Last year, he played in 17 games for the Panthers, having 118 targets, 6.9 per game. Very nice. I like. Number 21 at wide receiver, 63 receptions, 3.7 per game, 37th, 888 receiving yards, 52.2 per game, 26th, and seven total touchdowns, 14th at wide receiver. D DJ Moore has been metaphorically bent over a table his whole entire career as a Panther by the quarterback play. Just last year, he was dealing with the likes of Baker Mayfield, Mono Man Sam, and PJ Walker. He has had Kyle Allen, Cam Newton, and even the corpse of Cam Newton that weekend in Bernie's himself to be able to play five games in 2021, right? We have seen some awful quarterbacks like PJ Walker is an XFL legend and he has played multiple games with DJ Moore. DJ Moore has been screwed, spit roasted by his quarterbacks and still proceeds to put up good numbers year in and year out. The only thing holding him back is the quarterback last year, 6.3 target accuracy, 97th at wide receiver. 6.3 target accuracy. That is terrible. That is terrible. Stevie Wonder could throw the ball better than the quarterbacks did to DJ Moore last season. And yet, this man had a 35.6% dominator rating, which is a receiver's percentage of total team receiving yards and team receiving touchdowns fit that wide receiver. The Chicago Bears are definitely not the craziest step up at quarterback, right? It's not like Justin Fields is slicing through defenses like O.J. Simpson or something like Pat Mahomes, but Justin Fields is definitely much better than the other guys we talked about, and Justin Fields also has a great arm. I know a lot of people like to make fun of Justin Fields. It's like Lamar. He's a running back. Jalen Hurts, running back, this, that, and the other thing, but people love to do that to discredit the skill that Justin Fields has. And now, Justin Fields gets his best wide receiver weapon by far. Darnell, here comes the Mooney, didn't cut it. He did not cut it like OG Gen or OT Genesis in that song. He simply didn't. He was not good enough. Chase Claypool, not that guy. But DJ Moore is. And I understand being a little bit nervous about Fields and maybe this offense doesn't look as great. Maybe Fields suffers and struggles a little bit more. Okay, but at wide receiver 26, you are widely disrespecting the skill of DJ Moore. Just immensely. Because DJ Moore himself, I could be throwing him the fucking football and you should have him ranked higher than wide receiver. Number 26, my second wide receiver being disrespected by fantasy football rankings right now is Traylon Burks of the Le Titans, the Tennessee Titans underdog ADP wide receiver 38 at pick 72.3. Again, DJ Moore wide receiver 26 at pick 47.9. Last year, Burks in his rookie campaign wasn't the best. Wide receiver, 79 and half PPR, 61 and half PPR points per game, 11 games played with six starts in 2022. Traylon Burks, just like DJ Moore, was exposed to garbage quarterback play. Malik was so bad. Malik Willis was so bad that they had to bring in Josh Dobbs to play quarterback. That's how you know things went bad for Traylon Burks and this Titans offense. 
I'd say it's pretty safe to assume that uh, to assume that Tannehill is going to be the starting quarterback for a majority of this season. I don't think Tannehill's amazing. I also think Tannehill's better than he looked last year. So I think Traylon Burke should be just fine. And then even if they go to Mayo boy Will Levis, I think things will be fine as well. 11 games played with six starts in 2022, 54 targets, 4.9 per game, number 77, 33 receptions, three per game, 81st, 444 receiving yards, 40.4 per game, 74th, and two total touchdowns, 76th. He had a 50% contested catch rate, 19th at wide receiver, and .41 fantasy points per route run, 31st. And again, not great quarterback play. Now I know, going into last year, right, it was kind of shocking. Hey, this team just traded away A.J. Brown. And with that pick, they drafted Traylon Burks. And I don't think anyone was questioning necessarily if Traylon Burks was good enough or not to be drafted where he was, but it was kind of mind-boggling that you ship off this guy in A.J. Brown, who's amazing, right? I'm not saying top five receiver, but top 12 receiver in the NFL pretty clearly. And then you bring in Burks, and Burks obviously struggled. So people will even further kind of try and diminish what Burks is because he had a bad rookie year in a bad situation. Now, when you look further into things, when you try to uncover deeper, what is Traylon Burks' competition? It is Nick Westbrook e right? We've seen some flash games out of him. He's had some decent games but nothing consistent, right? He might show up, drop 20 points, drop his nuts on your forehead, and then he's gone forever, right? You pick him up off the waiver wire. He had one great game, hallelujah, and then he does nothing or puts up a goose egg zero in your lineup, right? They have Chris Moore. Haven't heard of that guy's name in years. Former Houston Texan. Kyle Phillips. Kyle Phillips. Nick Westbrook, e and Chris Moore. Derrick Henry isn't Christian McCaffrey. He's going to catch some passes. The only competition in this offense for targets like legitimate competition, is Chig. Chig Akankuwu, tight end of the Titans. Their best competition to Burks is a fucking tight end. It's a tight end. Again, I don't expect the Titans to be the most explosive offense in the NFL. I don't think they're going to be all that great of a team. But when you're down in games, you got to throw. And again, I think Tannehill's not that bad. So Traylon Burks, the number one wide receiver on his team, sure, he shit the bed in his rookie year, but he was hurt. He only started six games. People need to try and think back and put some respect on Burks. Because again, I get it. He didn't have the best rookie year. But look at the situation. Look at the situation. There is nothing around him. There is nothing around him. He's going to get force fed passes, game in and game out. I think wide receiver 38, that's that's way too high. He should be going wide receiver 32, 28, around that range. I'm seeing some blatant disrespect. Again, the Titans are getting disrespected as a whole. Rightfully so, right? The Titans are, besides Derrick Henry and Burks, they really, and Chig, they don't really have too much skill. I'll give you that. But I, I think this offense is going to be not the worst, and Burks is the number one receiver. And Burks coming out of college, again, it was shocking that A.J. Brown got traded and all this, but Burks had some legitimately good tape out of college. Sure, he struggled in his year number one, but I think we see a bounce back year, a huge year out of Burks in 2023 before we dive back in to wide receiver, the third wide receiver that is being disrespected right now by fantasy football rankings. I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor over at Underdog Fantasy. We've been talking about them this whole entire video. They're the best place to play fantasy football best ball this summer best ball fantasy football is the single best part about fantasy football the draft you draft your team that's it there's no waiver wire no in-season management no trades you just draft your team 18 rounds that's it underdog automatically puts your highest scores in your lineup every single week they have the biggest best ball contest ever 25 dollars to enter three million dollars to first place 15 million in total prizes you might be thinking nick that's a little bit of a pretty penny. I'm new to underdog. I want to do just some cheaper drafts. Well, they got the puppy too. Five dollars to enter. One million in prizes. A hundred and fifty thousand dollars to per to first place. If this sounds fun, best ball sounds fun. Make sure you check out the link in the video description. If you're new, using promo code Notorious, we'll get you a first match deposit bonus of up to hundred dollars. So you deposit hundred dollars, they give you an additional hundred dollars for free. 
if you deposit 50, additional 50, 25, and additional 25. All you got to do is promo code Notorious or click on the link in the video description. I plan on Dog Fantasy a ton. I've already ripped a bunch of Puppy 2 drafts. It is incredibly fun and it's kind of the best way to mock draft as well because people are putting actual money into this. So they actually care about the draft, right? You're not going to be seeing kickers going in the first round. There's no kickers and no, no defenses as well, which is also just a huge bonus. So now back on into things. Make sure you guys hit that like button, that subscribe button if you've enjoyed thus far. The number three wide receiver that is being disrespected by fantasy football rankings is Isaiah Hodgins of the New York Football Giants. Current underdog ADP wide receiver 81 at pick 183.4. Pick a 183. Wide receiver 72 and a half PPR last year. Wide receiver 51 in points per game. Sure, his stats aren't uber impressive. 10 games played, 5 starts, 47 targets, 4 points per game, 88th, 37 receptions, 3 points per game, 72nd, uh, 392 receiving yards, 39.2 per game, 86th, 4 total touchdowns, 37th. But down the stretch of the season, when they started using this guy from weeks week 13 to week 17, he finished top 24 in 4 of 5 games, as well as a huge performance up against the Minnesota Vikings and Kirko Chains, the new nightmare, he had a big game and they won. The other wide receivers around Hodgins are Perry Campbell, Darius Slayton. They drafted Jalen Hyatt, Jamison Crowder, and Wandale Robinson. All right, so you see, that's a whole lot of mid, whole lot of mid. Paris Campbell hasn't really been great in the NFL. He's had flashes. I'm not going to shit on the guy, right? But let's be honest, nothing special. Darius Slayton, he comes, he goes. Sure, Darius Slayton. Jalen Hyatt, he's that rookie. He's that X-Factor. Wandale, second year, could step up. Jamison Crowder, we all know what the fuck Jamison Crowder is, right? So, Hodgins, who was incredibly hot. NBA Jam, hot fire late in the season. Do you really think his role is just gonna vanish? Pixie dust, fairy dust, gone? Bonito? I don't think so. So you can get the potential number one receiver on the Giants. Now I know the Giants aren't the best offense ever. Daniel Jones isn't the best quarterback ever. And we've kind of talked about that with all of these guys. I think Fields is a little under, underrated in terms of passing. But again, I'm not saying he's the best passer ever. We all know Tannehill. He's all right. And then Daniel Jones looks a lot better with Brian Dable. And the Giants offense was humming, humming with Brian Dable as the head coach. So. You, you might be thinking right now, uh, I don't remember, like, was Hodgins even actually good? Like, sure, he was the number one receiver. He, he had top 24 games, four to five games where he was starting. He had top 24 games. But is this Fugazi? Is this fake? Right? Like, is, is it, like, sure, the numbers were high, but was he good? 53% uh, route win rate, number one at wide receiver. 56.5% win rate versus man, number one. 58.3% contested catch rate, 12th. 2.13 fantasy points per target, 7th. So yes, he was good. He passes the eye test, he passes the efficiency stats test. And he passes the test of being fucking free in fantasy drafts. Now I understand on underdog, it's 18 rounds. So you actually get to pick Isaiah Hodgins, and he's a useful player. In redraft, he's undrafted. No one's even thinking about the guy who might be the number one receiver on the Giants. No one is even thinking about him. No one. So, while Hodgins isn't Randy Moss, Hodgins hasn't even been great in the NFL until last year. He hasn't even found it. And by when I say great, he never really found a role in the NFL. But something, some spark lit under his ass with the Giants. And I love Isaiah Hodgins. I've drafted him in basically every underdog draft. I'm keeping a buck. I love Isaiah Hodgins. Sure. I'm excited by Jalen Hyatt, that speed. Wandale Robinson, I like him too. I like him too. But guess what? Guess what? Isaiah Hodgins is free. Those other guys aren't. They aren't. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Hope you did end up enjoying. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought. Do you like these guys? Or do you think they're being disrespected for a reason? There's a lot of people that dump on DJ Moore. There's a lot of people. So if some of you guys don't like him, it wouldn't shock me because it doesn't seem like he he's the most fan favorite player. Burks, do you like him? Do you hate him? Same with Isaiah Hodgins. Let me know down in the comment section. Let me know some receivers 
that you might be seeing in drafts. And you're like, why is this guy going so late? Doesn't make sense. Let me know in the comment section. I love you guys so much. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. As always, guys.